Hello, here's a tutorial to randomize some materials in your scenes, and this is very useful when working in Houdini, and I hope you could follow along. I'm using Redshift, but this will work with Mantra and almost any other renderer I could think of, so try to follow along and it should work in your render engine. Um, and what I'm to show you what it's going to look like if I uh, modify this, I could offset the UVs randomly, and also I could offset the color values like so and to get started I'm just gonna make a new scene so I could guide you through the process and we're just gonna cl clear this frame buffer like this go to scene view and here we're gonna add a geometry node and inside here we're gonna make a grid and we're gonna make a box and we're gonna make a copy points node connect the grid to the second input, the box to the first, and you should have your boxes copied to the grid points. So this is your model. I don't know what model you'll be using for this. This could be imported from Maya, so I'm not gonna modify anything above that to, to do the color. I'm just gonna work from here. So to assign a random color, I'm just gonna use a connectivity node like this. And what this does is, you won't see any difference, but I'll create a new attribute called class by default. You could change this number. And if you check the geometry sp spreadsheet, you'll see class and it has a unique number for each of the connected pieces. So all the points in this box that are connected to this box will give one number and then another box will get another number. And we could use that to randomize our color. So here we're gonna add a color node and in the color node, there is a random from attribute feature, and you can just type in class. And you can adjust the seed as you like. We don't want the color input, or I don't want it, uh, so I'm gonna make it black and white. And there's a little trick we could do. If we type in attribute wrangle, we can just write the simplest piece of code, and it, it will do the job. So all I'm gonna do is add capital C lowercase d dot r is equal to. So all that is, is that's the color attribute and dot r is the red channel from the, the CD attribute. So I'm gonna make the red the same as the green. So now I'm gonna do at CD dot g for green and equal to at CD dot b for blue. And you finish that off with a semicolon. So now that became black and white. Um, that just makes all these values the same. You can see the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel is the same, where up here it, it varies. Uh, just a quick hack that might come in handy. And then that's we're going to use that in our materials to randomize a lot of features. So I'm just going to create an empty material node here and a material network here. And here we could just browse for our matnet and type another slash and type, I'll just type Bob. That, that's what we're going to call our material. So inside here, we could create a material builder. In this case, I'm using a RS material builder because it's Redshift I'm using, but the same will work. And if we call this Bob, it will find it. And inside here, we want to we want to change the reflection roughness to one. I don't know why it defaults to zero, but it becomes shiny and you f make, it makes you think things aren't working. And here we're just going to add a texture and I'm going to browse for the texture like this, which I already had it pretty much ready and connect that in there. And right now we don't have any UVs, so this won't work too well, but we could add a triplanar I try planar utility here, and what that does is it'll project a texture on all the six kind of axes, and the, there's a blend amount which will blend blend the different uh, UV projections uh, to to kind of not show a sharp seam, and it, it's very good that you could do a lot without doing any UVs at all, and uh, all thanks to that little guy right there. So now, if we render this, and hopefully that works. 
And as you can see, uh, our normals are not right just because Houdini by default doesn't add normals. So I'm just going to add a normal node like that. And let's see that fixes it. Yes. And we're just going to move our camera, create a new camera actually. And like this, and we'll pick. We'll pick cam two, and we'll make a very quick lighting setup. Uh, click redshift and lights. Create the sun system. So now, when we render this, there we go. We have our texture. So I'm just gonna adjust our triplanar scale to be 0.1. Um, so we could just see the texture a bit better. It's not as tiled. And here is where we could add uh, our a point attribute node. And Mantra has the same thing. And I'm sure V-Ray as well. So just, just keep an eye out for it. And attribute name, we're going to bring in capital C lowercase t, which is the color attribute. And we have, uh, let's, uh, we could add a color mix node. Uh, make this black and white. This is just a good way to visualize it and bring the color out to the mix amount. There we go. And now you can see the colors, the attribute is coming into our redshift. And it seems the colors are reversed. And that's just because in here uh, I picked these colors. I could always pick a different one here like so so now what we could do with that I'm just gonna delete this color mix node is we could actually put it into our triplanar offset like that and now this these the data from these colors are offsetting our UVs but we don't have any control over that because it's only like a zero to one value. So you'll see a very minuscule difference. So what we want to do is uh, there's an RS color range option. Um, the, the Houdini version would be like fit, fit to range or some, some form of that. And we could just plug that into their input and out. And now we could adjust and you can see our UVs moving. You can see it's doing more than one axis. Uh, that's because this, this is a, uh, this one here is, is uh, the offset here is vector, there's three values. And all three of our RGB are, are the same. We made it black and white, so we made them all the same. But here, you, there's always uh, gonna be a, a feature to convert vector, uh, vector to floats, basically three values into one. Uh, the redshift version is the vector maker and we could put this on the x-axis and plug that into the offset. So now when we adjust this, we only adjust the x-axis. Then we could just duplicate this here. We could uh, just move that to the y-axis and then that will adjust our y-axis UVs. And then we can just make another one and the z-axis as well. Now we have control on all three axes as we like. And you'll notice it's random. It's not just moving everything at the same speed. It's moving at different speeds because of those random color attribute we have that's being brought in. And now to do the color version, we can just add a mix node, sorry, a color mix node. It's important to notice the difference between those two. And we put that into input one, then we could duplicate uh, this texture, put that into input two, and put a color, color correction node, yes. And again, every render engine will have this sort of thing. We could cut this line here. So we could put a color correct node, and let's connect this back up to the texture spot. And you'll notice I'm only putting it on the X axis in the triplanar 
just because there's an option here, the same image on each axis. Uh, if your render engine doesn't have that, you just have to plug in all three of these. But uh, for us, we have that nifty little feature. So now in this color correct node, I could like take this saturation down and make, make it really dark on the levels. And we didn't hook up our point attribute. So we're gonna add another like fit range kind of feature. We just copied an existing one and we could plug that into the mix amount. And now we can adjust this and it will kind of randomly do that based on our color input that's coming in. And that's just a really handy way to do that. And before we go, there's actually one more trick I wanna show you how to uh, maybe have different materials for different colored parts. So one way we could do is add another attribute wrangle node. I'm gonna hook that up. And there's a simple piece of code I know that does this. And hopefully you could follow along. It's just a quick if statement. What we wanna do is if a color is 50% gray or less, it will end up in one group versus another. And that means we could apply a different material to it. So we're gonna just type a statement here. If, and it, in brackets type at cd.r. I just picked the red channel. Uh, it just helps me visualize that better. Is less than zero. Oh, 0 0.5, yes. And we're gonna add these different kind of brackets here. And in here, we're gonna type in I at group Bob. We're gonna call this group Bob is equal to one. And we finish that off, put the closing bracket piece here, and hopefully that works. And uh, to, to give you an idea what that is, the I here just means it's an integer. Uh, and at group is just a tag who Dini understands that if you want to name a group, you need that in there. And then Bob is what you name the group. So that just creates a group with everything that is less than 0.5 value of red. So now if we add a split node here, we could pick the group and it did not work. Okay, why did that not work? Let me uh, figure this out, one sec. Okay, so there was a weird graphical issue with my video card. Um, it was working, it just didn't show it in the viewport. Um, it didn't change anything, it's, it's exactly as I said it, and now we add a split node, put that, and now you can see we could add different materials here. We could add one here, one here, of we wish. And you don't even need to split it, you could just just uh, group, type in Bob, and then browse for the material. And then here, if we had a different group, or you could put explanation Bob, which is everything that isn't in the Bob group, could be Bob two, or let's just call it gold. And in here, we could add a new material type gold, and we're just gonna use the preset here to gold. And then we're gonna just render that out. Cam two, there we go. Hold on one sec. My program's acting a little strange right now, but yeah, my 
my group's not working correctly anymore. Okay, it's a primitive attribute. Change that to point. Anyway, I'm doing something wrong here. My Houdini is not working quite right either, but um, you get the idea. I'll uh, just leave it here and yeah, it's not working correctly anymore. Yeah, very strange. I'll have to fix that up later, but that's kind of just showing you uh, kind of the power you could you could do with that. And it is always random, so we could always adjust our seed. And uh, and in our materials, it'll automatically affect uh, our particle lookup. So I hope you found this hell helpful, and I hope you make something really cool out of it. Thank you for watching.